Greetings sailors, welcome to some World of Warships viewer action, and today we're looking at this Fabuki game from Reaper20k. Now it's pretty good matchmaking, as you can see, there are carriers, but uh, they're tier 7, so he does have to worry about being spotted by planes, but uh, the, the tier 9s, well, there's not that many of them, so it, it's fairly good matchmaking, and for a destroyer, even being bottom tier, it doesn't matter that much. And actually, that's the thing I like about World of Warships, is that the the matchmaking spread uh, matters a bit less because of the nature of the game. Sometimes matchmaking can still shaft you, it can still put you in uh, awkward situations, but it is quite a different beast to World of Tanks, where uh, being bottom tier, uh, especially being bottom tier in a, a stock machine, can be frustrating and horrible and just not fun. So he's put his first spread out already and he's actually got this fully upgraded and you can see there he's only got two turrets to work with so um, he's more or less totally relying on his, his torps to do damage although he will fire his guns a couple of times in this game. One of his first spread is actually just about to hit that Uzumo up there, and there we go. But you can see just from the, the screen, well, these aren't the fastest torpedoes, and also by the time they get out to their maximum range, they spread pretty far apart. So there are some downsides to using these longer range torpedoes, um, but he actually said in his email, uh, since he started using these, he's had more success than with the, the stock 10 kilometer torpedoes, so... If this battle's anything to go by, I guess we're going to see exactly what he means by that. Although I think he sent this one in because it was a particularly good one. So I put some torps off in the direction of the York, which was just kind of... I don't know, you still see people doing that at higher tiers. And a lot of the time, especially out in the open where people can shoot you, it's not really a good plan to sit just stationary. If you're varying your speed to throw people's shots off or to throw off torpedoes, um, then that's perfectly valid. But if you're just going to sit stationary in the water, and the enemy Baltimore's doing exactly the same thing. Um, the only reason why uh, they're getting away with it in this context is because there's quite a lot of targets up there. That's quite a lot of the enemy team that's just come around this corner. You might notice from the minimap also, by the way, that this is the new two brothers map. This is the uh, the reworked one. So this is a replay from just the last couple of days. This is a, a 0.51 game. So there's another spread away. The second spread didn't do anything but this one might do because that's quite a big cluster of ships. It's North Carolina, Pensacola, an Atlanta, a York and I think there was at least one other ship that's uh, not spotted right now. Or maybe there wasn't. I'm just looking at the minimap. Having the minimap traces is very very useful. I really hope they add that to the base game as they did with World of Tanks because it's just it's such good information to have because I can't remember what's going on on the minimap half the time I'm too busy concentrating on what's going on in front of me anyway this looks like it's going to be a very nice spread look at that oh oh North Carolina oh oh so that's five hits seven hits and eight hits there we go eight out of nine torps and that is a lot of damage that's put him already over 100,000 damage, and he has severely damaged some of these ships. And the fact that, well, they're outnumbered on this flank, but uh, the fact that he's put quite so much hurt out against um, that North Carolina especially, he's going to go down very soon. He's made his allies' jobs here a lot easier in terms of, of killing these things. So there we go, the Miyoko's just killed that North Carolina. The uh, Atlanta's on pretty low health, the Pensacola's looking pretty unhealthy, so that has evened the odds a bit. The Baltimore, meanwhile, is actually just about to get into detection range, so uh, uh, Reaper's going to have to be a, a bit careful here. I think it's seven kilometers, and he looks like he's just about to skirt around the edge of that Baltimore and then get spotted from the air, because his AA guns fire because he forgot to turn them off. Whoops. <laughs> Yes, I mean, generally speaking, you should turn off your AA guns in a, a, a destroyer uh, to avoid that kind of thing happening, because even though there are... Oh, oh, nice, more hits, more hits, more hits, maybe a kill? He actually fires his gun here as well, because he knows you were spotted. And there we go, takes out that Otago. So that's his first kill. So, uh, more damage, 
rather nice. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a, a bit of a, a, a misstep. And um, most of the time in destroyers, you should turn off your AA guns unless you've got like dive bombers or something coming from you. Uh, in which case, you know, you might as well turn them on again. Probably not going to make a big difference, but uh, every little bit helps. So the Iowa's turned round to uh, uh, actually now start pressing up this flank. Now that the odds have been evened a bit, largely because of Reaper, he's sitting at over 160k, just over 160k torpedo damage. So, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. The Baltimore seems to be the only one now here that's actually on full health, although they do have uh, uh, a destroyer lurking around here somewhere, a Kagero as well. So. That's probably also full health at this point, but the two cruisers uh, that we can see are, well, looking pretty unhealthy at the moment. There's also a Colorado up there somewhere as well, and the Ranger was actually last seen heading to this side of the map, so maybe that could be something that uh, Reaper could sneak through and kill, maybe? Maybe? I actually had a game in the Isakaze the other day, and... That's as far as I'm on, uh, as far as I'm at with the Japanese destroyers myself. I've got the Minikaze unlocked, just don't have the credits because I've been spending all my money on the uh, Nagato. But uh, yeah, I managed to um, basically sneak through and kill not one but two enemy carriers. And oh, it's so satisfying in a destroyer. So very satisfying. Engine. So the Iowa is pressing up, but uh, well... <laughs> He's the sole focus of fire at the moment. He's the, the closest thing forward. So even though he's a, a tier 9 battleship, um, he's getting a lot of attention. And that's one of the things in this game is you never really want to be the sole focus of attention. No matter how big and bad your ship is, uh, it, it will hurt if there are multiple enemies firing at you. Especially in a battleship where although you've got the armor to better survive it, you don't really have the rate of fire to uh, do anything about it. So, more torps out against the Baltimore, who actually appeared to be reversing. And he's really still only getting away with it because the uh, the allied teammates here are all concentrating on other things right now. The Iowa's run aground, unfortunately, and we also just lost to North Carolina. But um, I think the fact that suddenly I, a bunch of the people were running away from this flank, they were withdrawing because they thought, okay... There's a whole bunch of enemies here, we're all screwed, let's run away and have a fighting retreat. And sometimes that's actually the sensible thing to do. Uh, and the Baltimore's actually backed into an island there as well, well done. But um, I think they were at least paying attention to the minimap and they saw, no, the, the tide has turned, now is the time to actually uh, uh, start pressing up and start doing something here. Now, some of those torps may hit the Baltimore. They're not the fastest torpedoes, they're definitely not the slowest in the game. I think the slowest torps you get are like... 50 knots, 52 knots, something like that. On the Russian destroyers, I believe, actually. But um, at 57 knots, yeah, they're definitely not the fastest torps ever. Meanwhile, Al Rizumo takes some torps himself, and uh, look at those secondaries. Secondaries on battleships are just so horrifically inaccurate, and sometimes you get kills with them, but it's not very often. But he's doing some serious damage to that Baltimore, who's just flailing all over the place. But, unfortunately, there's the Kagero who materialises right in front of the Izumo. He got really close before he got spotted, so... Uh, yeah, that's bad news for the Izumo, definitely. There are still, however, other battleships coming up behind. There's a, a Miyoko here as well. The Iowa is actually now at the back, but he kind of... Well, he was the focus of attention, so he wanted to withdraw and repair, I'm guessing. And that often is the case with... Uh, 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 battleships you end up if you've got several you can um, spread the, the the damage around basically you can you know someone will be at the front for a bit and then someone else can take a turn at least in theory it's certainly a lot easier to do that if you're platooning up with another battleship but um, between random uh, teammates sometimes it's quite hard to you know you'll get that one guy that just sails around at the back and full health when he could have used his hit points to come and help out and taken some of the pressure off and I don't know, battleship drivers like that, I think, are the ones that everyone gets kind of cheesed off about, because they don't really engage. And sometimes you need to uh, keep your distance, and you need the the space to manoeuvre, but other times you have to actually uh, dig in and actually get stuck in and, and start doing stuff, and some battleship drivers seem to, be very, uh, seem to be very, very shy about doing that. So Reaper, meanwhile, has spotted that this Colorado is now uh, basically unsupported by anything. So this could be a good opportunity to get some more damage done. Although, 
he could die at this point. He could His ship could just get blown right out of the water and he would have still had a really good game. He's, he's done over 160,000. But it's actually been a little while, like a good couple of minutes since his last torpedo strike. So I think he, he was just like, no, I'm not done yet. And why would you be? I mean, you could just sit back in your laurels and, and go, yeah, I've had a really good game, but... Uh, that's not the nature of, of World of Tanks or World of Warships, you know, there's, if, if you've got the health and your guns are still working, then there's always more that you can do. So he put more torps out and he actually killed his speed there um, to, uh, I don't know, take cover behind the island. He was probably not really in danger of getting spotted, although I think the Colorado might be within spotting range now, maybe. Yeah, only 7.2 kilometers away. And, oh, there's bombs coming overhead, so he's, he's definitely lit up now. But, um... I think it was more just to take a pause to let his torpedoes come back because, as I said, the torpedo uh, reload on this is not particularly fast. But I think that's that's fine. That's fair. It, that's the balancing factor. These are uh, very very powerful torpedoes, and you can put out nine of them. And you saw what happened earlier when he had uh, eight hits out of nine torpedoes. It was a lot of damage done. A lot of damage done indeed. Now this is the bit where he starts using his guns because. That North Carolina is not paying attention to him, he's not looking his way at all, but... Well, the Colorado is paying attention to him, and at only four kilometers distance, well, he'd be hard-pressed to miss these torps. And actually, oh, that looks like the carrier's put out torps against him, or possibly the Miyoko. The Miyoko might take one of those. It's not quite clear who the carrier was trying to drop those on, but... Uh, either way, the Colorado's doing their best to take evasive action at this point, and... Given that there's a better part of a minute before these torps come back up, well, Reaper's got to be careful here because uh, he's only got so much health. Even a tier 8 destroyer, as you can see, just just about only has 14,000 health. But, well, there we go. It wasn't enough to finish off the guy, but it was enough to get a Confederate medal with that one torpedo. Oh, there we go. Another torpedo hit. So, that Colorado is, um, yeah, he's, he's in trouble now, and I think he knows it. Now he does get another couple of hits, but those look like AP overpens. And if you're in a situation where you know you're only facing a destroyer, it is worth loading the HE, even in a battleship. But he's denied the kill. I mean, he was trying to set the guy on fire. The guy had obviously repaired flooding, but uh, um, the one of the battleships coming up behind managed to get the last bit of damage. And so that's one less thing shooting at him out of the way. And we're now down to the last enemy ship, this uh, Ranger. And he puts torps out knowing full well that they probably won't get there in time. But you might as well. You never know. Everybody might miss their shots. Now the guy's already on fire and I probably would personally have switched to AP at this point. But I think with these shells, um, if I remember correctly, the HE pen is almost as good as the, the... The HE penning damage is almost as good as the AP penning damage. So maybe it's worth sticking with HE on this uh, this destroyer. I don't know. So there we go. Um, the screens are a little bit fuzzy, unfortunately. Uh, they were rather low resolution. Of course, they've been blown up a bit. But it's enough to see that he had over 3,000 base XP and was, you know, that was way at the top of his team. That was a lot of damage done. And although it was only one kill, the amount of damage he did with those torpedoes enabled his allies to um, storm up that flank when it looked like initially they were completely outnumbered. So um, that was some very good team play there. And he must have been particularly pleased with that one spread, eight out of nine hits. I think any destroyer driver would be. So if you enjoyed this bit of high tier destroyer action, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.